This video is sponsored by americascardroom.com. Use the code POKERGUYS when you sign up for a 100% deposit bonus up to $1,000. US players are welcome. Yeah. The High Five Tournament Series starts October 19th. It has almost a million dollars in guarantees and the main event has a $420,000 prize pool guarantee. That series has buy-ins for all bankrolls from $3 to $500 and ACR has buy-ins for all bankrolls every day. So get on ACR and get you some poker. Imagine, if you will, you're standing on the street in an era long past. A steam engine rolls by. A zeppelin flies across the sky. A travel agent calls your house asking for business. I am, of course, talking about the year 2007, when the 2007 PCA occurred outdoors. Is this the man in the high castle where the Nazis won World War II? I think it might be. I don't know. A zeppelin flies by. Okay. <laughs> anyway, it's the PCA 2007. It's Ike Haxton against Ryan Doubt. They are both super young, super aggressive, and really good at poker back in that time, and they played a really fun hand. Absolutely. Stack sizes are this. Doubt is the chip leader. He's got a little over 60 blinds. Haxton is the effective stack with about 30 some odd blinds. And the difference between first and second is a whopping $600,000. Second place gets 900K. First place, a sweet, sweet 1.5 million. That sounds pretty good for a young kid like these guys. Yeah. This hand was suggested on Twitter by Cameron Hunt. If you have a suggestion for the breakdown, tweet it at us and include a YouTube link. We're gonna break this hand down as we go. So get ready for some analysis. Great poker face. Let's go to the table. It's gonna be on him. This time, got a 7-5 offsuit. Well, Vance, very obvious. Call. He hadn't seen a hand he didn't like in this heads-up battle. He limps in and calls here with a 7-high. Isaac right behind him with a 3-deuce of diamonds. No, he's not going to raise. So finally, we get to breathe. No raise before the flop, and here it comes. Well, flop comes ace, queen four with two hearts. Isaac with the wheel draw. Yeah, he's checked it. And now Ryan, who hit nothing there, is getting chips out, betting on position. And he's going to bet 300,000 here. Call. And, and he's quickly called with a straight draw by Isaac. Ryan not particularly liking that. Of course, Ryan Doubt doesn't like this. He has no. seven high. He's got nothing working here. He didn't raise pre-flop, so he can't really rep much of that board. You said something really important there. He hmm. didn't raise pre-flop, and that's hmm. going to define pretty much everything in this hand. Even during the commentary of this hand, Mike and Vince mentioned that there's been a lot of raising pre-flop. That means it's really likely that if either guy had an ace, they would have raised pre-flop. So this board is kind of atrocious for both of their ranges. Yeah, what is Ryan repping here? Probably a queen, yeah. I would think. Almost never an ace if he's if all the pots are raised pre-flop. I could have an ace sometimes, sometimes, since he was at least out of position. But we'd expect Ryan, if he's been raising all the time anyway, to certainly raise any normal real hand right. here. If we were looking at this hand so far without knowing what their cards were, I would say it's more likely that Ike has a real hand than Ryan because he was willing to call a bet. He wasn't just an aggressor trying to win the pot. He thought he had a hand of some value, at least it looks like that. Clearly we can see he has the nut low. Yeah, not so much value as <laughs> yeah. it turns out after all. But if you're in Ryan C, it looks like Ike has only one of a few kind of hands here, right? He has a four, he has a queen, I guess once in a blue moon he has a weak ace, or he has a draw, and most of those draws are gonna be I would guess there could be jack-10, but mostly it's flush draws. Mostly flush draws and some gut shots, I guess. Yeah. He might also check-raise flush draws. We're not really sure. This was a different era. It was 2007. The most popular TV show was I Love Lucy. Seinfeld? I don't know. Who knows? It's a billion years ago, basically. <laughs> so the way these guys play is a little bit different than yeah. the way people play today. The thing is, no matter what, neither of them can really rep a strong hand at this point. Let's talk a little bit about Ike's call because he does not have enough, enough equity with his gut shot to make this call. No. He has to have a plan because he also doesn't have a bluff catcher. It's not like he has the king high gut shot where he actually might be ahead sometimes. He has the nut low. This is an ambitious plan. He has to make a move later. Yeah, Ike is of course a fantastic player yes. to this day. With fantastic hair. Yes, then and now. Yeah, although a little different, different types of fantastic but hair. He, he wears it all and he wears it all <laughs> yeah. well. But um, yeah, he can't just be calling, trying to hit a five alone. It's not enough here. So he's got to have a plan. And part of the plan has got to be, he knows that Ryan limped and he thinks this board is just bad for Ryan. So I can call now and take it away later. I'm going to check raise some turns or bet some rivers when it goes check check. It's got to be part Classic of Classic 2007 shootout developing. Well, King of Diamonds comes off now. Helps neither player. Isaac is checked. Uh, will Ryan fire once again with his nothing hand? No, slows down. So off to the river we go. Well, the Queen of Clubs comes off. 
As the cards lie, Ryan's got the best hand with the seven high. 700,000. And he bets 700,000. Well, Vince, the only way Isaac can win this pot is to bet at it. He's got the worst two cards you could have right now, a deuce and a three, and he's taking a stab at it for 700,000. Raise. I can't believe what I'm hearing. Ryan, with almost as bad a hand, says raise. Well, this is incredible. Vince, he thinks he's stealing the pot. Ironically, he's got the best hand with the seven high here. But he doesn't know it. And look at this. He is raising it, going to make it $2 million <laughs> with absolute Garfunkel. What an amazing raise this is. Well, he's raised at $1.3 million. And right now, Isaac has a migraine headache. Oh. <laughs> Ryan Doubt, you know, it's like Isaac's cards are turned face up on the board. The way Ryan's playing him, Vince, incredible. And Isaac sickened. Well, he puts his head down like he's sick to his stomach, and I don't blame him. He took a stab at this pot, and the guy raised him to two million, and he has absolutely nothing. Uh, but he hasn't mucked yet. I mean, the only ridiculous chance he would have to do something like go over the top, please don't start that. He's got the worst two cards you could have at this moment. Ryan now saying, what's going on? Why is he taking so long? Re-raise, all in. Oh, no, he's going to go all in. Wow, Vince, he's done it. He's pulled the trigger for all his chips. And there's no way Ryan can call him. Ryan was bluffing himself with a seven eye. And look at this. Isaac's going to show the hand. Oh, he's going to put some salt in the wound. Wow. I don't know about you guys, but I am blown away by that quad box technology 2007 where have you gone i feel like we regressed and we no longer have that and i mean i just feel like we're i'm at a loss right now main event coverage on espn it's tri box match yeah. you got lawn you got norm and you got the board that's all we can do so i think like, it maybe four is too much it's like cost prohibitive it's, it's really it's really <laughs> expensive to do the quad box i mean it's four cameras instead of three those things ain't cheap yeah that, oh that's a good point yeah. that's a good point let's get to the play though all and right. the play that we really care about here is the river Obviously, Ike's plan when calling with three high on the flop is to at some point bluff unless he somehow hits the miracle five, which too bad you didn't. So you got to bluff. So we bet 70% of the pot on the river and it actually makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it's completely reasonable. Ryan checked back the turn so we can eliminate the very few strong hands from his range like queen four anyway, the full house is, it's literally the only full house he can have. Yeah. Um, Ryan could have trip queens, but that's about it. He yeah. really can't have anything else. So there's not a lot of value in sitting over there across the table from us. So I think a bet here with three high makes all the sense of the world, especially given how we chose to call on the flop rather than check raise right. or something like that. Now it's on Ryan and Ryan has a problem. Yeah. He can't bluff catch. No. He has seven high. We know he can bluff catch. We know Ike has three high. That would be an insane bluff catch the and best. it would be the most legendary hand of all time. But. In his mind, he has to get Ike off of Ike's bluffs. If Ike has like the 9, 10 of hearts or something like that, he's going to lose to that if he calls. So in order to bluff catch, he in fact has to raise. Yeah, and so he does. This is questionable because yeah. Ike is repping a really strong hand here, right? And Ike's the one who check called on the flop, so he's supposed to have something, mm -hmm. really not the hand that he has. But Ike can have trip queens. Ike is more likely to have full houses and a straight here. Ike yeah. can have jack 10. I can have queen four. Less likely, but he can have it. He might choose not to check raise yeah. on the flop. Similarly, he could have pocket fours. I think it's not super likely, right. but possible. But any queen is totally reasonable, and jack-10 is reasonable. Right. Whereas Ryan, we think, probably can't have jack-10 because he limped pre-flop and he was on the button. Usually that's going to be a raise, especially the way the commentators are talking about this yes. hand so far. So finally, we get to breathe. No raise before the flop, and here it comes. So yep. Ryan has two things he has to accomplish here. He has to rep a hand that makes Ike fold, and he has to put Ike on a hand that Ike will fold. Right, so Ike could indeed have a flush draw. Yeah. And since we can't bluff catch against it with seven high, we can raise and get him to fold it. That can work. Yeah. That's pretty good. And Ryan, based on how he played the hand, completely reasonably has trip queens here. Yeah, Ryan would definitely bet a queen on the flop. He would definitely check back a queen on the turn, and he would kind of have to raise a queen on the river for yeah. value. The kicker doesn't matter unless a person has a full house, and neither of these guys are likely to have a full house. Yeah, I, we think Ryan would be raising trip queens and, and calling it all in with it. Yeah. So he would have to, so raising here does make sense. The problem is Ike has more strong hands in his range than Ryan does in his. Yeah, so Ryan must be putting Ike on a flush draw because Ike's not really gonna bet a king or an ace on the river here if somehow he got to the river this way because as we said, Ryan can so easily have trip queens. Yeah. So now you see Ike tanking and he's tanking for a reason. Ryan's story includes only really one type of value hand, trip queens. So Ike's asking himself, can I possibly get him off of whatever his bluff is? Of course I can. 
Does he have a queen? Yeah, exactly. That's the question. Now, because of the price that's being laid ultimately, Ike has to bet something like six point what two million, yeah. give or take, to win like three point seven million in the pot. That means Ryan has to fold a fair amount of the time here. He's yeah. got to fold like sixty three percent of the time or something. So there has to be more bluffs that Ryan is capable of here than value. So you have to know your customer pretty well to know that you can move in here and get the guy to fold something like 64% of the time. Right, Ike has the same problem that Ryan had when Ike bet 700K. You can't bluff catch with three high. So in order to bluff catch, you have to make a really high variance, 6.2 million chip bluff catch. Re-raise, all in. Oh, no, he's gonna go all in! And we're not sure it's worth it. Yeah, the one thing that I'm wondering is, Ike takes some time, as you see. He's yeah. sort of looking, the wind is blowing through his hair. I wish it was slow motion. It's beautiful hair. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Maybe he picks up something on Ryan at that point. Maybe he looks and sees Ryan looks uncomfortable or is doing something that he does when he's weak and is hoping for a fold. And then Ike just thinks, I can just move in and win here, baby. Right. I guess Ike just thinks Ryan has a queen or he doesn't. I'm going to say he doesn't. I'm all in. I hope it works. It's a classic 2007 shootout. It does kind of feel, without absent that read, it does feel about like two guys in separate cars driving at each other and they're both wearing blindfolds. Like, yeah. I wonder if we're gonna crash into each other. <laughs> feels yeah. like that. Maybe it isn't, but it really feels like I mean, like that. that was the era though. It was the era of aggression and people did stuff like this, sometimes without so much range consideration. Yeah. We know Ike was ahead of the game. We know Ike is a really good thinking player. So he must have at least done some thought before making this move but he had to just really be hoping Ryan doesn't have a queen. Maybe he was also wondering about what's coming next week on Star Trek, because it was 2007, <laughs> it was so long ago. Yeah, right? like, I, I, love wonder, I wonder I if love Captain Kirk is gonna beat up Spock <laughs> or what. Yeah, um, I, I wonder if the cotillion is gonna be full this week. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we better end this right now. <laughs> to hear our responses to our favorite comments from you on this video, click right up here. If you guys wanna see another really great tournament series like the PCA, check out our World Series hands by clicking up here. Yes, indeed, they're so wonderful. <laughs> Definitely watch of course. them. Also check out our podcast where we go into so much more detail on this hand and don't forget to subscribe.